Yes. Good talk. The Man. home of where the talking is good. It's oh, your boy Cody is good. and the hungry guy Robert yeah. here once again. The tiny mm. table, the big day room. seven. Yes, here we are. <laughs> This is how terrible I'm at math. It took me to get to day seven of a fast to realize that 21 days is three weeks. Oh my god! <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm a quarter of the way there. And seven, 14, 21. I think so you're technically in day eight. I On my think. calendar, it I put a little seven. It's oh, you have it. You got it. Okay. That I've uh, when, been without food. I'm just trying to think because when we recorded the last podcast. I will take your day eight, though. I'm trying to because I was listening to the podcast. You're like, this is day two of my fast. So that was... Thursday when we recorded. Is today seven? I don't know anymore. Math's hard. You guys let us know what day Robert's on. <laughs> Today's the tenth. So whatever that looks like, I want to give a shout out to everybody that's been commenting in the comments. Yes. You guys are amazing. We finally have it. I apologize to one user. I'm, I apologize if I don't recognize your name or whatever. I've gotten myself in trouble now by going down this road, but here we are. Shout out to Dark Cracko. <laughs> Yes. I'm sorry, Dark Cracko, that we haven't been allowing comments, but we fixed it. Comments are active. Do you know who Dark Cracko is? Bro, why'd you do this to me? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> why? How because was... they just told me today, like, we don't think Robert knows that I'm Dark Cracko. <laughs> I don't know who Dark Cracko It's Dark Cracko. I Dark mean, I, how do I know people's username unless it's their actual name? How am I supposed to know usernames? Dark Cracko. Leave Give us a hint a in secret. the comments down below. Ooh, this will be a fun little game. Leave Help us Robert hint. figure out who Dark Cracko is. This has nothing to do with the fact that I'm on a, fa a fast, but throw me bread. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me a bread trail. Leave me a trail. <laughs> Leave me a trail of bread. Uh, do you know who Dark Cracko is? I do know who Dark what? Cracko is. I do. No! I do. Who's Dark Cracko? Uh, to be fair, I have insider knowledge, so I can find out. Is it Kai? No. <laughs> That'd be so crazy. Is it Roman? Dark Cracko. <laughs> uh, I mean, I feel like it's You have inside info. Is it you? No. <laughs> yes, I'm Cody's secretly commenting on all of our well, videos. Well, that's what some people that do really to get like likes. Like. and That's what they do. Let's stage this mug. Oh, man. <laughs> Yo, I feel like if you really think about it, it's not going to take you that long to figure dark it out. Dark Wesley? <laughs> dark Wesley. He Chad? wears black all the time. Feel noodle? There you go. It's, it's like Noodle! It's Noodle! I figured it would be like Noodle Boy Nomad or Nudes well, or d like oh, some. His name. Yeah, why would he do Dark Cracko? And uh, how am I supposed to know it from that? Well, I mean, it kind of sounds like an anime name. <laughs> I mean, let's be okay. real. I guess I feel like it's from an anime. Like if it was like Wakanda Forever or, you know, Black Panther 4231 sure. or. <laughs> You know what I mean? Something like that. I'd be like, oh, that's Noah. I think sure. he has multiple YouTube channels, one for his streaming and one for personal mm. viewing. Dark Cracko. How Dark you doing, Crack buddy? Good to see you, Noah. <laughs> Another uh, name tough. added to the list of names for Noah. Uh, Dark Cracko. Okay. I do. It's uh, funny. Anyways, like what, maybe we just like. I feel like we could have hmm. kept that going longer, like a span of our episodes for Robert to figure out who Dark Cracko is. I'd have been so frustrated, like dude. Seconds. I'd have broke the internet. I'd have been like, we're done. I'd have turned comments off. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This time we finally get <laughs> it working. We're finally doing it the right way. And I was like, get him out of here. Get him out of here. So anyway, so how are you guys doing? What are we discussing? today i feel like i'm gonna go ahead and throw this one right onto your shoulders i feel like i've had the topics the last shouldering several the shouldering the shouldering the shoulders hey. i don't really know what we're talking about today cool. we're um yeah i'm trying to think of what's going on in the world that has piqued my interest um I, the only thing that's really been rolling around and it's a little bit of later news but i don't know if you've heard about him did you hear about liver king <laughs> no do you know who liver king <laughs> no, is i don't oh my god liver king <laughs> These you, names, Dark Crackle, Liver King, like, is this a person, a boxer, a, a, uh, well, a rapper, a, a singer, a country a musician? Rapper. Who is this guy? <laughs> his name is, uh, I don't know his actual name, to be honest. I just know him as the Liver King, but basically he <sighs> is a super crazy fitness type guy. Is he holding a liver? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, you literally have no idea who this guy is. Like, this is the first Are, time you've seen him? What is that liver out of? It is huge. It's huge. I don't know what it's from. But essentially, this guy... That dude is shredded. Very shredded. Um, over the past year or so, he's been, like, basically promoting, like, this raw eating. And, like, he literally just, like, eats liver just, like, as is. And he, like, eats, like, Ugh. very undercooked meat and basically... 
basically said like this is how a man is supposed to be like i live this way this is who i am but basically he said he's self-made only and that's why he has abs like that but then it came out like a month ago that he's just on all kinds of like hormone boosters oh and sure had, look at the guy and he's had uh like surgery for his abs he's had surgery surgery for his oh abs my gosh. And so, yeah, all this came out. Most people weren't surprised because it's like clearly he's shredded, dude, shredded, shredded. Dude's shredded. having some help outside of it. But the biggest thing he's been promoting the fact that like it wasn't done unnaturally. Like anyone can achieve this body, but they do this. But then he came out and he basically was like, "I'm so sorry, I've been caught. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I didn't mean." It. He's like, I-, "I messed up." He's like, but then he doubled down and was like, "I did it to bring awareness for these issues that are going on of in course. the world." And I was just like, "Oh my gosh." What? <laughs> like, I'm going to sound so judgy. I don't like, want Like, here's my thing. Like, can we just own up to when we do something stupid? You know <sighs> what I mean? Like, like, dude, like, I, I, I'll say this. And he had a very successful supplement nutri- I don't know this guy, so I don't, I don't mean, I don't want to take this podcast to just bash on this human being by any means. But I'll just say, like, he had, like, this nutritional, he already has had background in, like, the health fitness field anyway. But mm. then, like, to take advantage of that mm. and use outside things and then promote it. Dude made lots of money promoting I feel like, his lifestyle. I feel like we've slipped into this this time where people feel like they can do everything, and they know once I get busted, as long as I just give an apology, I'm I'm chill. Yeah, like that guy that stole all that crypto, mm-hmm. and like and then he comes out and he's like, "I donated it. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was for a good cause." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that justifies stealing millions of dollars from hundreds of people. Yeah. It was for a good cause. Yeah. You know, it, there's that there's that old expression, the ends justify the means. Mm. And uh, I think it, it does it, though. <laughs> it does, does it. The fact that you're going to donate this to charity, does that now justify stealing <laughs> from other people? It would have to be like a very greater good type of situation, right? I mean, like a well, very... Well, I don't un- think you can ever make just... Can you ever make justification I don't know. for I, sin? I don't know. Maybe not. Oh, gosh. that's Well, right. is that, that not what stealing is? Yeah, it's one yeah, of the commandments. Yeah, and we gosh. know that the commandments are still... The law of Moses is still activated in the world today. Even Jesus told us that. I didn't yeah. come to abolish the law, but I came to sustain it. He said, you say thou shalt not commit adultery. I say if you even look at a woman, you've yeah. committed adultery in your heart. So he's only elevated. He yeah. said, you say you shall not murder. I say if you've even hate your enemy you are murdering your heart so jesus elevated this stuff and i feel like people just i will say this it's interesting how in our own mind Mm. we first justify things that we know are wrong and uh not appropriate, but yet we justify them in our mind. So then our behavior, well, every bad behavior I've ever done was first justified in my mind. Well, I mean, even as you're saying it, like you said, I was like, there's got to be a time. Like in my mind, I was like, there has to be a, at some point a justification, you know, at some level of like maybe it will go to uh, mm. help hundreds of children get fed. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But like right. in my mind, it's like I was trying to justify it. Right. Like there's got to be a, a, a good reason for it somewhere down the line. Yeah, I'm sure like that guy, whether now whether he's telling the truth or not, you know, I wanted to do it to bring awareness. That was his justification in his mind for doing something that was not (laughs) correct or not appropriate. The guy who did all that crypto stuff, his justification was, well, I donated it to charity. I donated it to this political party. Some good came from it. He justified it in his mind. So let's say this. Be careful what you justify in your Mm -hmm. mind because your actions will follow whatever you have first justified or deemed as appropriate in your mind. Then that's going to come out of. You. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like I would almost rather like someone like that, like even if I could say if, if I did something that awful, like I would rather come out and be like, all right, clearly I messed up. I made some bad choices here. I'm owning it. I'm, I'm recognizing that I've hurt some people along the way. I've mismanaged uh, some financial th- like things here and it doesn't look good on paper, but I'm going to make it right or I'll figure out a way to make it right. Like I would rather him say something like that than be like, eh, I did it for this. Well, that, that would be you taking accountability and no one wants accountability. Yeah. Everybody wants to, let's just slip this over to this person or let's slip this over to this reasoning or let's slip this over to this excuse because it's all, and we know that this has been a problem for thousands of years because even Jesus, again, addressed this Mm -hmm. problem, you know, when he, in a, in a a subtle way to what we're talking about, about how dare you complain about the moat that is in your neighbor's eye when you have the beam in your own Mm -hmm. eye. So it's like, we're always trying to shift it. The other look over here. (laughs) It's not me. That's the issue. I didn't do anything wrong. I did this for charity. Mm -hmm. You know, look at this charity that really needs help. There's 
always that misdirection. Mm. And through misdirection, no one ever takes accountability. And when we don't take accountability, and when there is no accountability, it really allows you to live however you want. Yeah. And that's one reason why people rebel against the Word of God, mm. because the Word of God is the ultimate accountability. It keeps you accountable. If you read it and choose to live by it, it will keep you accountable. Mm. You know, And so people reject it because they don't want any accountability. Yeah. They want to live how they want to live. They want to do what they want to do. And in their mind, it's all justified. Right. And they don't want you to hold them accountable. They definitely don't want to hold themselves accountable. Yeah. And uh, to me, that's it's, it's sad because that's a deterioration, not necessarily of society, but of one's own life. Mm. You know, I don't want to live my life with no accountability. You know yeah, how many yeah. people I'll hurt? Mm. My wife, my children, my friends, our church. You got to live with accountability if yeah. you're going to keep, you know, protect yourself and protect others. Yeah. I think it's actually, uh, it, I've, it's been a while since I've listened, but I remember like Tim Ross was saying he has like a whole entourage of people that come with him, like even when he goes on the road mm -hmm. just to keep him accountable. Accountable. And yeah. that's so like admirable as like someone, you know, on the surface level, level who clearly has a lot of influence, has a great platform, and yeah. yet still recognizes like, all right. I've got some things I got to make sure I don't let myself do or mm. uh, let myself think like I've got trusted people in my life to help keep me focused. And I think that's really necessary right now. There's not enough people allowing voices in their life mm. to keep their head on straight. Mm. Like even this liver King dude, he had a wife that was in this business with him before this. And he started doing, like, sure. Again, I don't know these people and right. I don't, I don't want to be cast in, judgment on anyone and i'm just kind of analyzing a situation <clears throat> here and we're analyzing we're yeah. talking we're chatting we're chatting and i would hope that if i started going out and making outlandish claims and falsehoods that my wife <laughs> would start being like hey you need to dial it back here homie. dial it back here you're kind of starting to say some things that aren't quite true yeah, and sure. you're about to get yourself in a bad situation like i would hope that as my helper and my my, my, my voice of reason, mm -hmm. you know, my, my love that she would help me out. And I, I feel like, I don't know this person, but if there, if there was a conversation, they clearly didn't listen or they encouraged the behavior. And that's bad too. Like we need people that are going to discourage us from making yes, bad choices, true. especially when it comes to our walk with God mm. and how really we even treat people, you know, pastor Mark brought it out a couple weeks ago, you know, back to your first love, you know, mm -hmm. love God with all your heart, but also love people. And when you do that, that's yeah. when you actually fulfill the commandments. And I've talked about it before, but you know, that word keep out of the Greek, it, you know, it means to like guard over or to ward over and to really just protect. And like what I thought about every time I hear about that is like when Jesus says to keep my commandments, he's saying like, take guard over these. And so as, as believers that are living in this world, that are supposed to love God, love people. We should hopefully surround ourselves with people that they too want to guard yes, absolutely. those commandments. Right. They too want to fight for loving God and yep. loving people. Right. And in turn, bettering those that are in their circle to be, re be able to reflect that yeah. out into this world. And I feel like that's where, as a as a church, big capital C, that maybe we've kind of gotten away from. Sure. Where we're lacking sure. the accountability to yeah. keep our heads on straight and to keep our focused on the joy that should be set before us. Well, it's even a concern when you see some of these, I, I'm not trying to throw them under the bus, but I'm just going to throw them under the bus, like some of these celebrity pastors, like who are they accountable to? Mm. Who has their ear that if they do get off, yeah. can talk to them and say, yo, yeah. some of what you're teaching is not biblically mm. sound. That's not good theology. Everybody needs to be accountable yeah. to somebody. You see it in scripture all the time. Even Jesus yeah. was accountable to the Father. He said, I do not speak what I want to speak. Mm. I do not do what I want to do. Yeah. I do what the I say what my messages yep. are what the Father tells me and so I do good. what the Father says to do. So his accountability came from heaven. You look at the apostles and the disciples, you look at the apostle Paul who wrote two thirds of the New Testament and his revelation was outstanding. Without his revelation, we wouldn't understand how the sacrifice of Jesus was for Gentiles, those who were not God's yeah. original people or whatever. But he, even he said, I went back to the apostles and I checked in with my message mm. to make sure that I was preaching sound doctrine and good, good doctrine. And he went away for three years and studied. So everybody in the word of God who did something, Timothy was accountable to Paul. So I mean, you see a accountability in the scriptures and in the word of God. And 
I think we have to ask ourselves. We need to be, this is just a season to be genuine with yourself. Let's mm. not get into that realm of self-deception because the Bible talks about that's the hardest deception to break out of when you are self-deceived and you start thinking every mind, every man, like scripture says, every man is right in his own mind. When you start thinking you are right in your own mind and you deceive oneself, no one can help you at that point. But let's start, let's, let's, let's put ourselves on the spot here, all right? Mm. Let's come up with a couple things Ooh. that keep us from being account- accountable. Number one, okay. I think... Got a list going here. When, well, we're just going to see. It might be a short <laughs> list. It might just be one. <laughs> okay. I was thinking like, oh man, we're going to have to remember this list. Yeah, right? <laughs> that was like at the end, we're like, and remember, number one. Post two, it in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> Write that in the comments. You know, but Help keep us accountable in this episode. <laughs> Write it down as we talk about uh, it. Number one, <laughs> Dark Krakow on I, you. I think the first thing that keeps you accountable is your relationship with God. Mm. If you have a genuine relationship with your heavenly father he will keep you accountable yeah because it says the first and foremost love god yes love god love god and 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 then jesus also said if you love me you'll obey my commands right so when you have this true genuine love and relationship with him it's going to lead to obedience which ultimately comes from submission mm. which leads to accountability right cuz true <laughs> love i follow believe that bouncing ball. there is submission in true love absolutely and and it kind of comes both ways like yes. so there's there's times where i come under my wife and there's times where yep. she comes under me it kind of go not that god's going to come under yep. you but you know what i mean like yep. there is submission in love there's accountability absolutely. in love and it yep. should be That's right. uh fought for and it yep. should be welcomed in a relationship through jesus's submission to his heavenly father God was able to keep them accountable to the disciples, you know, submission to one another. And Paul submitted to the apostles. They were able to keep them accountable to Timothy, submitted to Paul. He could keep him accountable. So who are you submitted to? Mm. We all, you know, I'm submitted to Pastor Mark and Pastor. Well, first of all, I'm committed to my king, which sure. is Jesus. Yeah, I'm yeah. committed to my heavenly father and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I'm submitted to that. So he can correct me above everybody else, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, but beyond that, in, in human form, I'm committed to just like the word of God teaches us. He's given us under shepherds. Mm. In Ezekiel 34, we see that. And I'm submitted to my under shepherd, which has been placed there by the over shepherd, which is Jesus Christ. I'm submitted to them. So when they see, there's been times they've pulled me aside and been like, yo, we see this in your life. Mm. You need to check it. And you need to work on it. Accountability, yeah. right? But if I wasn't submitted to them, yeah. what then what Jesus was talking about in the book of Matthew, that, that word would fall into hard ground mm. or would grow into thorny ground. Yeah. And through my genuine submission, I keep my soil good ground That's so good. that seed that they speak can go in there and can grow and produce mm. fruit in my life. Accountability is a big thing. It'll yeah. keep us on the path that God has for us. I would like to say that we can stay on the path entirely by ourselves. We have God, the Word, the Holy Spirit, but I think we do need association. Yeah, it'd definitely be a lot easier along the way. I mean, from the beginning, it's not good that man be alone. That's we right. were community people. You know, we were made for fellowship with God, but also fellowship with each other. We're we've been talking about we're meant to do life with God, but yes. also with his people. Yes. We are his creation. We are his mm. family. We're supposed to do life with one another. Mm. And I feel like we need to recognize and hopefully find people in our lives that want the same thing that we do. Yes. Or that want that have the same vision that we have, love God, love people. I'll go one step further, and they're bold to speak up when they see that we're not, because you remember Adam and Eve in the garden. I used to think that Adam was out fishing or something, but the Bible says he was right there next to her. Isn't it so crazy? Uh, Yeah. We can read a scripture a thousand times, and then one time, oh, man. Oh, I see it now. I missed that one word. (laughs) But it's just like you were saying, with this Liverpool or Liver King or Liver whatever, this guy, like, where was his spouse? You know what I mean? And again, we're not throwing shade. If you want to come on the podcast and eat some liver and tell us what's going on, you're more than welcome. Come on out, my friend. Beat us down because you're shredded. But anyways, <laughs> but you know, it's it's so Adam, where was the boldness to speak up? Yeah. To keep your partner in life from going off the rails. Yeah. You know, I want my boo, Rachel, I, you know, if she sees me getting a little scrolly, hey, baby, you need to speak up. Yeah. And likewise, we're going to hold yeah. each other accountable. You can't hold. Now, this is not talking about a spirit of correction. Nobody has mm. a spirit of correction. Yeah. But what this has is like you using discernment to see what's going on in someone's life. And out of love, you speak the truth in love and you say, hey, I'm not trying to hurt you, Mm. but I don't know if this is healthy for you. Can we talk about it? Right. Can we discuss it? And in that situation, you're not being rude. Mm -hmm. You're not being confrontational. Hopefully, you're genuinely wanting to help them. And out of love, you speak truth to them. Yeah. But it takes boldness to do that Mm -hmm. because in our mind we're thinking, well, what if they get mad? What if this conversation goes south? What if I lose a friendship? Mm. You know what I mean? We have, but but none of that should matter. Their life is more valuable, 
And and I'm not saying that we're everybody's accountability partner, but I'm saying we do need people. Yeah. You know, like if Cody started preaching stuff, I mean, we've even talked about this. You know, if we if we start preaching stuff that's not theolog- theologically sound, where's the accountability? Right. You should be bold <laughs> enough to speak up, and I should be bold enough. Yeah. To, and then our hearts should be open enough to receive that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at least have a conversation right. about it. You know, and I think that's one... Another thing in this, we've talked about this before, but in today's society, the hostility towards no one can say anything to me about what I'm doing Mm -hmm. unless we sever ties in relationships. And so then that just makes people want to stay quiet because they don't want to lose a relationship. They don't want to, you know, do any of that. But we need to be open hearted enough to where we can hear from people around us that are close to us. Yeah. And so back to Adam and Eve, like, I don't know why you didn't speak up. Yeah. Speak up up my guy <laughs> yeah often say t- something <laughs> i think about both sides like sometimes i'm like why wouldn't he talk to her or why wouldn't he go to god in that moment and then i also think of like why didn't <laughs> Help! She- yeah i mean honestly like he i don't yeah. know like, like i don't have his so knowledge many mistakes. Time. i mean they were the first created people and we have no idea at least i've never taken the research to figure out in theory how long were they walking with god before mm. this happened mm. was it a day was it 30 mm. minutes like were they just freshly dumb you know what mm. i mean and they were just easily tricked i don't know i've never researched that either. was it years i don't know but i i would like to hope that at some point eve could have should have been like hey adam uh what do you think about this i'm about to uh do you remember what he said about the fruit yeah because yeah. i don't did he say adam or, adam what do you think you know i i and i'm not putting it all on the women because that's not what i'm doing i'm just talking about this particular instance but yeah i i, I wish and hope that we aren't afraid even on ourselves to go to our person like like i i don't know if eve was afraid i think maybe she was just genuinely confused hopefully but it would have been awesome if she was like hmm i don't know about this let me go to my partner and see what he thinks or like if he's yes. like i'm not sure what i think about this i'm not really <laughs> sure i don't understand what the scripture really means when it says about this i'm not really sure what i'm how i'm supposed to navigate this situation let me talk to robert about what would, yeah where's robert been in this situation yeah. or what does he think about this scripture or what does he know that the word of god you know says to support this or that or the other we need to recognize and understand like we don't have all the answers yep. and it's okay to not have all the answers Mm-mm. i don't know a lot of things <laughs> but i surround myself <laughs> with people that are going to help me along yeah. the way and also i surround myself with god who ultimately helps me but that that's important is knowing i can't do this mm. i don't have everything i yeah. don't have all the answers but people have been placed in my life to help me get to those yep. destinations it's important that when we don't know ask mm-hmm. See, her problem was, his problem is he didn't speak up and he didn't, he didn't step out and say what needed to be said. Her problem was she contemplated what the devil said. Yeah. And instead of asking God a question or asking her husband a question, she just contemplated it. Now, through that portion of scripture, we also see one of the biggest, uh, what's a word for enhancers? No, one of the biggest. Oh, I feel like it's on the tip of my brain. Help us out. It's in the brain hole. Help us out, good people. <laughs> One of the biggest uh, catalysts, yeah, we'll say that word, for a lack of accountability. Mm, okay, all right. Is the deception that the devil, okay, so when she fell prey to that deception, because this is what a lack of accountability genuinely does, devil told her you'll be gods. Mm. Her whole reason for eating the fruit is she wanted to be the god of her life. And so that's... When we, when we really boil down a lack of accountability in our own lives, it's because we want to be the control. God of our lives. We want to make our own decisions. We want to decide what's best for us. We want to decide what to do, when to do it, how to do it. We want to decide what decisions to make, what is good for us, whether it's sin or righteousness. We want to make all these decisions. We want to be God. And God is the only one that's not accountable to anybody. And so when you make yourself the God of your life, what goes out the window with that is accountability. So good. Because now I'm in charge, and, and God does not submit to anyone. Yeah. And so when you think you're the God of your life, whether it's through deception of lies of the devil or whether it's through justification in your mind, and you, whether it's through temptation, and you make yourself. Now, nobody, I, well, I won't say nobody, but we, it's not like we run around and say, I am God. Right. You know, <laughs> we don't display that in that boldness and that, dist- but we can tell by our actions who's the God of our life. Mm-hmm. We can tell through our thoughts and our speak and what we do. Who's the God of our lives? And when we, when we get a God complex, there is no accountability mm. because we don't believe we need to submit. We believe that we're always right. We believe we're over everybody. Nobody can tell us what to do, how to do, when to do. 
Um, again, that's why a lot of people recoil against the gospel because it is a message of submission. Mm. It is a message of you are not the God of your yeah, life. Yeah. God is supposed to be the God of your life. You're not the Lord of your life. Jesus is supposed to be the Lord of your life. Yeah. And so people recoil against the gospel because it talks about stuff. Deny yourself. Mm -hmm. What we said last week on the podcast, bring your life to the altar. Yeah. I love what you said, dude. It still resonates. Die so you can live. Woo, I just got chills when I said that. <laughs> <laughs> ah, say it again. <laughs> I mean, that's good, brother. I mean, that was... And like you said, you can read something and yeah. hear something a thousand times. Of course I know that. I've yeah, read yeah, that yeah. scripture a million times. And then you said it, and it just struck in my heart by the Holy Spirit. I was like, dang, that's good. Yeah, yeah. You really want to live? Then you really need to die. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds so crazy. It you want to live? You gotta die. <laughs> it does sound crazy, but this is the word of God. Yeah. It goes against what we think. It goes against science. It goes against everything we know, because it's a spiritual book. Mm -hmm. It was written by a spiritual being to spiritual people. Yeah, and you can't understand it in the natural. And so, um, but accountability. And so we have to make sure we don't get a God complex. Mm -hmm. We have to make sure, and 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 in doing so. We'll be able to have some accountability. When you are accountable to people, it, it serves as fruit and evidence that you don't have a God complex. Mm, yeah. I think it shows a heart, too. Shows a heart. It shows a heart that you're teachable. Yes. That you're patient, mm. that you're compassionate, and that you're understanding and willing to even hear hard things. Ooh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, I don't know what the personality trait or the scripture is for that, but you're willing to hear it. Mm. You're willing to hear the criticism. And, and in most situations... Yeah, well, Jesus said it. He said, anyone who has ears to hear, let them listen. Because what he said was not easy stuff to hear. Yeah. That's good. So he was like, not everyone... And he even told us in the parables, he's like, not everyone's going to be able to hear this message. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. It's good. It I, is good. I it, it's I, proof of an open heart. I don't know. Yeah, maybe that's it. It's just open-hearted, mm. vulnerable, um, accepting, uh, humble. Teachable. Yes. And and that's something, that word humble has just really uh, resonated with me a lot because I think it's First Peter 5, 7. <clears throat> yep. Humble, humble yourselves. Yep. And then at that point, he'll elevate you. I, I'm, I'm really missed it, but it's like humble yourself before God. And humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, you. and in due time, he will... Mm -hmm. But I, I I love that because it's like if you recognize I'm I say the word recognize a lot you gotta recognize you gotta recognize today you gotta recognize today all right uh, but it's like if we recognize that you know we don't have it all mm. that we don't have that that shows humble and humble attitude and and it's in that mm. respect that then you get elevated which doesn't make any sense it's like. If I want to climb higher, I need to just climb the rung of this ladder to get higher. Mm. But what, what God's saying is just take a step down from the mm. ladder and let me get you up there. Let me let me put you up there. Mm. Don't don't do it on your you don't climb that ladder until I put you up there. Yeah. And I think a lot of times we just want to freaking climb that ladder because right. we're just impatient and we feel like we know what's mm. best. And like you said, we want to take control. I want to get the ladder now, so I'm gonna climb the ladder. And it's like, just freaking wait, dude. Down is up in the kingdom. Right. If you wait, the the, the, the time that you get elevated to where you're supposed to be, you'll be ready to mm, take it ooh, on. Oh, yes. And I think that that's the part that we rush the process. Yeah, we and that's why we call, fall. Yep. And that's why we fall. That's true. Yeah. And, and we all have fallen <laughs> to that at times. And I think learning that that's not the best way yeah. can help us in the long run. And that's something that I've really been trying to... Maybe with that that humbling, that maybe that's why it's been sticking out to me. It's just like, look, kind of like we talked about mm. last week. Just trust God. Yeah. Just understand that He's got you, and that if He tells me, "Hey, you don't need to climb that ladder yet," it's in your future. Yeah. It's in your future, and yep. that ha it is what I've called you to. But you're not ready yet. There's it, some things that you have to prepare mm. yourself. You've got to discipline yourself mm. with the Word and how you teach people and how you look at people or whatever it looks like in your situation. God's saying, "I've got some things that need to be done in your life." Put people around you. Yep. Get people in your life that are going to keep your head on straight, that are going to keep you grounded, that are going to keep you in the Word and keep you on track with your call, but also keeping me first and understanding that, hey, I know what's best for your mm. life. And these people in your life, they're going to help you listen to them. Yep. Listen to them. This and thing's a slow cook, y'all. Yeah, it's like a crock pot. Yeah. Man. It's a cr and we it's just, worth it. We just had turkeys for Thanksgiving and Christmas. I hate that those are behind us, but they are in my future. <laughs> um, but, That's right. <laughs> but, you know, if I just if I put that turkey in my deep fryer for like five minutes and then get it out and eat it before it's ready, it's going to be 
very bad for me. Yeah. Very unhealthy. And it's going to cause me to get sick, and 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 Lord knows what else is going to happen. So we got to let the sucker cook. And there's let so God much, cook. <laughs> there's so much potential in that turkey to actually benefit. You right, later that's on. right. And if, if I you... wait till the appropriate time, it's so good. It's yeah. so good. And so I think you know, <laughs> there's a saying in sports: let them cook. You know, we got to let God cook. Mm-hmm. Let him cook in your life. You know what I mean? And be patient in that season. Yeah, patience. Patience is a fruit of the spirit. Mm-hmm. You know, He's cooking. Yeah, and it's going to be good when you get there. Yeah. But let him cook and, and, and don't get out ahead of God. And the way we don't get out ahead of God, one way, not the only way, is accountability. Yeah, yeah. Stay accountable to him, accountable to your spouse, accountable to your mentors, accountable to those God has put over you in ministry. Stay accountable and keep an open ear so they can feed mm. into you and tell you what needs to be heard. Yeah. So maybe you're like, all right, how do I find my account- accountability people? Who are my people in mm. my circle? Well, what is your good question? What is your environment? Who are you around? Who are your people? Are your people your family members? Do you have family members? Are they walking with God? Do they want godly things for your life? Great. That might be your circle. If they don't, maybe you have people at school. Maybe you have people at work. Maybe you have people at church. And that's a good place to start. Yeah. There's more than likely going to be people at church. I hope there's people at church. And the first thing I'll say about accountability, who's your pastor? Mm, there you go. Yep. If you can't answer that question, then you're missing a large part of God's ability to keep you accountable. Yeah. Because correction for our lives comes through Scripture, but not only through Scripture, through the messenger who's delivering that Scripture to us. Even in Hebrews, we've been reading this a lot over in 12. Uh, you know, our God is consuming fire. But above that, it says, do not forget who is the one who is speaking to you. Mm-hmm. So when our pastors are speaking to us, it's not a man or a woman. It's the Spirit of God. That is, It's Jesus speaking to us through them by the Word of God to keep us accountable. If you have no pastor, you have no accountability. God didn't promise you a church. He promised you a pastor. So you must know who your pastor is if you're watching this and you don't have a pastor come, come to cornerstone come we out. have wonderful pastors pastor mark pastor ronda they will love on you and this is how i know they will love on you because they'll give you the word mm. and the word will teach you it will correct you it'll put you on the path that god has for you so you can get to that slow cooked turkey all the good things that jesus has for you but you got to start there this is my pastor i can answer that question without any doubt pastor mark and pastor ronda are my pastors so and because of that i've got a church home so find your pastor um, even in Hebrews, it talks about their job is to watch over our soul. Mm. Now, what's interesting about that is it talks about how it is no joy for them to watch over our soul if we're not submitted to them. And the reason it's not joy for them is because when we don't submit, they have no authority. Mm. It's the same way with God. He can't watch over your life if you're not submitted to him yeah. because he has no authority because you're in the dominion of darkness and the devil is still your father. Yeah. <laughs> and so he can't protect you. He can't keep you. He can't bless you. He can't preserve you. He can't do any of those things. So it's only until we submit mm then it is a joy for them to watch over our souls because now their authority works in our lives. They can speak to storms. They can do this. They can believe God. They can pray. They can speak the word of God in our life, and it's received. And so find your pastor. uh, And then uh, even before that, work on your relationship with God. That's ultimate accountability. But then God puts people in your life to help with that as well. Your pastor being one of them, your spouse being one of them, and then what Cody just said, friends being, you know, have good friends. Yeah who are, I don't know if I want to say this, I'm just going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you have a friend and they're going off on a, wand, uh, a, a wayward pass and you feel like you can't say anything, then I question the authenticity of that friendship. Mm. I mean, you're speaking some truth because if you truly care about that person and you see bad things on the horizon from them because of choices or decisions, like, you care about them. You right. don't want them to get hurt. You don't right. want them to be uh, in turmoil or have repercussions of yep. a bad decision because you care about them. So surely you will have a conversation yep. with them to either stop them or at least help them recognize what they're doing is not healthy or beneficial for them. If you're really friends, yeah, wouldn't you? Yeah. If, if Cody's really my friend, if I'm about to run head on into traffic, I want him to say something, even if it's hard for him to say and hard for me to hear. Is the strength of our friendship not strong enough to withhold and to stand up under yeah. some scrutiny, mm. right? And so it should be. Yeah. 
we should be able to disagree and still be friends on the other side of that disagreement. Mm -hmm. We should be able to come to each other and talk about difficult things and still be friends on the other side. And then another one, if you are being mentored by somebody in ministry and that mentor can't say hard things to you, then they're not, you're fooling yourself. You have no mentor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Look at Jesus and the disciples. He was constantly rebuking those guys and putting them in their place. He was constantly <laughs> calling them names, you know? I mean, Satan. He called one of them <laughs> Satan for crying out loud. He gave him a new name and then later I was like, you're Satan. <laughs> <laughs> right, which I love Jesus. He's a total vibe. I'm, I'm all about it. When he walked up to Simon, he was like, yo, Peter, my man. That is my dude. I, I give everyone nicknames. Uh, I was about to say, that's you right there. <laughs> I know it. So oh, I know he was called gosh. Simon Peter, but Jesus, right. you know, his name's Simon. He just full blown with Peter. But so you don't, and then, it, and then, it, and then, so if you, if your mentor can't speak into your life, they're not a mentor. You're mm. kidding yourself. And then if you are a mentor, I'm, we, this is not us giving you permission to just call your, <laughs> those your mentor and bad names and oh, just, gosh. you know, control <laughs> them because mentors, there's both sides of this yeah, equation, yeah, yeah. but we're talking about accountability. And so your mentor should be able to say difficult things to you and it should not drive you away. Yeah. When Jesus rebuked his disciples and said difficult things to him, they still stuck by him. Mm. And they still stayed with him because they knew what they would get out of the correction was greater yeah. than what they were feeling in the moment of the correction. Mm. And so they believed that. Yeah. And so they were willing to hear those harder words. I love Jesus, man. He, he, I'm just, I'm, I've been immersing myself in the gospels and he just was constantly on those guys. Mm. They would ask questions. He's like, come on, I've been with you for how long? And I've told you these things how many times and you still don't get it. Dude had zero patience <laughs> with the disciples. He was a patient man with everyone else, but with the <laughs> disciples, he's like, come on guys, get it, get it together here. So anyways, <laughs> love it. Uh, I, I think one thing that kind of uh, stuck out to me when, when Rob was saying, you know, make sure you have a pastor over your mm. life. And I, I was thinking, because there's probably people out there that feel like they don't have friends. And mm. and maybe that is apparent for you in this current situation, or maybe that feels very true for you. Uh, but a pastor doesn't have to be a friend to love on you. And that's true. And to help you. That's a good point. You know? And, yeah. And mm. and while I, I, I think that they should be friendly sure. towards you, and I hope that they are, I'm not saying that. I hope you understand what I'm saying <laughs> is that, like, they can still be a voice in your life. They can still be an accountable voice in your life, but they don't necessarily have to be a friend, but they can lead to friendships. Because I think that if you can get mm. godly voice in your life, and you know, first and foremost, work on a relationship with God, but then find a godly voice that's a pastor over your life. And I believe that when you start getting a godly voice in your life, you start to recognize this is the type of voice that I want in my life. Right. This is the type of life that I want spoken into my life. So when you find a pastor that speaks life into your life, then you start to say, okay, yep. I need to surround myself with people that also think. Mm, Like-minded faith. Yes, that also want life in my life, mm. that also want mm. good things for me, that also want to see me successful. Yep. And those are, you start to accept, like, this is what I'm worthy of. Mm. And that sounds bad in, in some ways to like, I'm worthy of this, but I guess not. No, you are, wor you are worthy of having a life voice in your life. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you're, you, you, you need that and God wants that for your life. And so I think that can start with a pastor mm. to help you recognize this is the type of voice that I need in my life. So go mm. and get you a pastor for your life, get life being spoken into your being and that way, I believe that when you do that, you'll recognize, okay, these are the type of people I need in my life. And so when you start to engage with other people to find your accountability circle, you'll start to be able to say, okay, this person belongs. This mm. person does not. Yep. This person speaks life. This person promotes death. <laughs> they mm. don't belong in my circle. This person is not cool with me choosing God's ways over my ways. They're not in my circle. This person wants you to love God, to love people. Bring them on in. Yeah. I don't, you know, you can figure out your circle for you, right. but I believe that that is a good way to start. Are they speaking life? Yeah. Are they promoting death? Mm. And a pastor is always promoting life in your life. Should so be. That's a <laughs> wonderful place to start to get yeah. you a decent accountability. Mm. So start there, and I believe that when you start there, you're already in church, so hopefully you'll find like-minded people there to also right. incorporate into your circle. Right. But it'll be easier knowing, okay, this is the mm. type of voice I'm going to need because I've already had it in my life already. Yep. Amen. Amen. Love it. So get out there. Do y'all write them down? You remember what they are? We started with one. I think we only said number one. And you, I'm sure we said other things. There was subtext under yeah. it, like 1A, 1B, 1C. It all just starts with the number one thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> Never came back. <laughs> Never came back. Oh, my gosh. Bullet point here. <laughs> Check mark there. Asterisk here. <laughs> right. 
so good. Oh, man. Accountability is good, guys. It is. It is good and is necessary. Mm. It, what were you asking? You seemed like you had a thought right there. Well, it's just when you said it, that that's the whole thing right there. Accountability is good. Accountability is good. Believe that it's good for you yeah. because it is good it for is you. It is good for you. Accountability you, is good. If we just settle that in our hearts, yep. we're on the right path. Yeah. You... It's so necessary. Again, yeah, we, it is. We've talked about it a little bit in this this moment. There are there are destinations, there are things, there are dreams, there are callings for your life that you are supposed to get to, mm. and and I and I know this, and I feel like I can say it confidently. You're not going to get there on your own. Yeah, you might get close, and it might seem it might seem like you're getting there on your own, but it <laughs> will never be the highest and best <clears throat> and the, the true. Uh, beautiful, wonderful picture that that Jesus has has put out there for you without accountability in your life. So go and desire and seek accountability. Okay. Well, in the event that that ending didn't quite end the way that we thought it was going to end, and it's black for you guys right now that on the YouTube thing, that's okay because our video just died. Ended. But the vi- the audio is still here. I don't know where I left off. The video had to die so the audio could live. Yeah, the audio could live. So get out there. Accountability is good. <laughs> Seek accountability. I, I know I was on a good point. but It, it was, was a good point. I feel like we could cut it right there and we'll be Gucci. Yeah, and if not, you're hearing this part. So yeah. uh, that's okay. That's all right. You guys mm. have a great week. You got what God needed for you today. And uh, go and share with others. Go Amen. share. Go share the good talk with your good friends the good talk with the good people. <laughs> All right. I'm looking at the camera right now. Like it's, it's, not recording me it's not even on. It's not even on. Like, why am I looking just, at the camera? I'm staring right at oh it. Oh, my gosh. All right. <laughs> so good. <laughs> well, see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye. Oh, that was cute. <laughs>